it is in the interest of your interest to know how your income is being taxed. I am Winga Olatunji welcoming you to Jijen Saturday channel. We want to look at how to compute payee tax which falls under the category of personal income tax actually. So having said that, these are the things that we will be looking at. Who actually should pay tax will be answered in this video. How to determine chargeable income we are going to know and how what the rates will be the scale in which we are taxed and last but not the least we are going to calculate in this video on how to pay and compute your tax especially payee tax we are welcoming you if you are yet to subscribe please smash the subscribe button and like and comment please let us know you so when we are talking about pay as you hand system who are to pay tax is the first question to pay pay tax and they are individuals trustee executives and executors and employees of businesses or organizations people in employment they are chargeable under pay as you hand tax system having said that residence is important when we are talking about payee you have to be fully working in nigeria you have to be employed here and also your employer has a fixed space in nigeria actually expatriate tax is an exception to the rule or brings complexity to the table and we are not going to be looking at that under this video we are going to be looking at it in another video having said that the second question posed is how to determine chargeable income so we ask ourselves what is chargeable income chargeable income is the income that could be taxed that you have that at the end of the day could be taxed so employment income we are going to subscribe to your non-taxable income from it some people we have non-taxable income and we are going to see what they are income also on which no further tax is payable and tax exempt after we've removed this or minus them we are going to have your chargeable income so income that are not taxable part of them is your statutory allowance and relief and please this slide is very important to understanding the calculation we are going to be having later on now in this video premium you've paid maybe prior year yeah, especially when it concerns your life insurance and that of your spouse only will not be taxed also if you have a pension fund and you contribute to it of course it's mandatory for the employer to do if you have national health insurance scheme and you are under national housing fund you will be granted exception and by that we mean that those income will not be taxed they will be reduced before the tax rate will be applied last but not the least that you need to pay attention to whether as a student whether as employee employer and people that are any income consolidated relief allowance or cra now unlike before that dependent allowance uh, wife allowance husband allowance just name it they do not exist anymore everything has been consolidated and you have first of all 200,000 to yourself or 1% of your annual gross income but usually because 1% is a very very small 
hundred thousand is more or less like constant in any payroll system because hardly will you have a figure that will give you one percent and will be higher than two hundred is possible hmm. that may even be very big you know that mm -hmm. then your two hundred thousand or one percent of your hana plus twenty percent of your gross income is given to you as your statutory allowance and relief it will not be taxed so we've made note of the definition of gross income to be your gross emolument minus the statutory reliefs which we've mentioned most likely we are going to come back to that slide anyway then having said that your tax rates the rates we use is graduating rates and progressive rates here and having said that the higher you earn the higher you are going to pay maybe i should come again slowly the higher you earn the higher you are going to pay so that is why i said in the first place it is in your interest to know how your income is being taxed after now we are going to go into calculation see this graduating as it's graduating can, can you see it we need to understand one thing that it looks confusing but it's not conf confusing at all we are going to calculate it it starts from seven and it scales actually upward having said that let us go into the calculation so this is our tax board which we are going to use in computation so now let us have our monthly figure let's say you are earning a salary of around let's say 700,000 so yeah your monthly now we want to calculate now your monthly equals 700 right are we together okay so this is your monthly now to determine your tax first of all we, we have to analyze it so how much are you going to earn per annum it will be 8.4 if you calculate it right so your annual salary will be equals to 8.4 Okay. Having determined your HANA now, the first thing we want to know is to calculate. Let us calculate your statutory HANA relief now. Your statutory HANA relief. So don't forget that we made mention of some key statutory relief. We talk about national health insurance we talk about national housing fund your pension fund and CRA consolidated relief allowance so you have your 800 to yourself now hello everybody Bengala Tenji here welcoming you to GGM Statistics channel we want to quickly dive into computation of payee tax because we had earlier dealt with the theoretical aspect of it so we are going to learn who pays payee tax we are going to understand in this video who and how to determine chargeable or taxable income how to determine chargeable income and also the tax rate applicable in competition of payee tax is a graduating or progressive tax rate so let's go into our tax board and begin to do the competition right away don't forget we are going to the competition because we had earlier dealt with the theoretical so what I'm going to do is to link put the link in the description for the theoretical video so that people that miss that could watch it then understand this better so computation of 
payé. Okay. Then we should have one name for our organization. Like I always say in the exams, always remember to name the complaint that the question has named. So what name should we give the complaint? Let's say um, okay, any name. Mr. ABC Taxpayer. Mr. ABC Taxpayer is what we are computing for. The first thing when you are computing PAY tax is to try to understand basically they are going to give you also the monthly so let's say ABC has a monthly basis as a bit of a big man or a big lady 700,000 per month so what we need to do first is to analyze it that is what will be the annual income of mr or mrs abc so annual income now it's an annual gross anyway will be figure my share press the calculator if you compute it right you should get 8.4 so the annual income of anybody earning 700,000 is 8.4 now what are the statutory allowances and release don't forget the alimony does not exist anymore wife allowance children allowance husband allowance name it dependent and our allowance or allowances they do not exist anymore so what we have now is a personal condensed relief that we call consolidated relief allowance cra which basically gives us the first 200,000 to ourselves so ABC we have 200,000 as personal allowance to himself or herself also 20% of the annual 20% of the annual income actually that 200 is either 200 or one percent of the annual but basically to arrive at a figure that will be higher than two hundred thousand with one percent annualization is not impossible but it's a bit difficult so but so usually you have in uh, HR payroll generally 200 as a standard it's not a standard figure if you have more than that and your one percent could be more than two hundred thousand you are going to have that figure as your personal CRA that is consolidated relief allowance then you had the 20% of your gross income so figure measures what would be the 20% of 8.4 so plus 20% of 8.4 so we should have 1.680 this is the figure that we should have let me put in it and this is very first major calculation that we should arrive at so having computed our personal release now 
some other reliefs that we are entitled to are national housing insurance scheme national health fund and pension so let's assume because not all organization will enroll us for national housing insurance scheme or housing fund but pension is more mandatory and monitored so let's say our organization is remitting pension and we too are to remit pension also so we are now going to as the person paying tax now as the person paying pension now you are to remit at least eight percent and the employer will remit at least ten percent or more you two will remit eight percent or more so let's use eight percent that's the least you can remit so the eight percent of your gross don't forget 8.4 we should arrive at a figure around 672,000 so don't forget this figure is your pension if the organization is on the housing or health scheme these are allowable deductions for you so it simply means you are going to have all this deducted from your please permit me with all this uh, computation that we are doing and the world i'm trying to align it but it's not that forthcoming then let's waste time on it so if your organization is on HIIF, you will have the relief. If your organization is on NF, NHF, we call it, you will have your relief. But if they are not, it's not going to be deductible, then we can calculate your tax implication from here now. So if we are to calculate your tax implication from from here, what are we going to arrive at? Figure machas. So we call it at the end of the day we want to know what part of your income will be chargeable to tax. So we call it chargeable income. So we want to calculate chargeable income now. So in calculating chargeable income, we need to take away your reliefs from the main income. So we need to add the 200, we need to add the 1.6, let me put that 200 separately so that we will not mix it up. So this 200 you are entitled to it your personal don't forget it's a standard figure I want to believe that we remember when we put it there so it's a standard figure add 200 to 1.680 to pension we should arrive at 2.5 So this 2.5 is not going to be taxed. So at the end of the day, this is not going to be taxed. Excuse me. So the total of, so this is not chargeable, right? We are yet to have chargeable. So this is the total of all our release. RSA, RS. consolidated relief allowance 
so we now have your chargeable so when we take away 2.5 from 8.4 take away this from this now we shall have 5.8 5 million 848,000 will be chargeable to tax so why this is not going to be affected by the tax rate we are going to put the tax rate on this right about now so this is how to find how to determine chargeable income or taxable income the first one has been answered who is to pay payee the income earners the sole proprietorship executors and the rest of people that need to be personally liable to tax that is they are not an organization that pays income company income tax so the next step now is to calculate our tax liability as individual taxpayer so quickly i'm rubbing this off i hope i'm allowed let's rub our personal income so now we have our chargeable, chargeable income let me quickly take us back to an important slide on the rates so this is the rate for calculating our this is the rate for calculating our personal income tax so having said that let's quickly go back to our tax board so the first the first rate we need to take care of is seven percent So the 7% of the first 300, please note that this is a standard rule. It cannot be bent. The first 300,000 of your income will be taxed using 7%. So government is going to take 7% of it. That is what it means. And it will calculate 7% of our first 300,000 irrespective of what we can even though now we are using 8.4 as our annual income we are going to have 21,000 taken per annum on any income that is 300,000 when the amount of our salary exceeds 300,000 it goes into the next bracket of 11 percent tax rate of the next 300,000 that we are earning or it could be lower let's say somebody is the the remaining of the amount is 200 it will be 11 percent of that 200 okay having said that for this purpose in which we have the chargeable income of 5.8 the next 300 will be taxed and the person is going to have a liability of another or additional 33,000 taken away from his or her salary. Then we are going to have the next rate to be 15% and see please don't crack your brain about the tax rates. You will see that is graduating by four four percent so from seven to eleven from eleven to fifteen so you can guess what is next so fifteen percent now win is no longer on 300 it's now on every additional 500 so 500 thousand will be tax 
by the rate of 15 percent please don't forget all these tax rates are standard they are standard so that 15 percent of 500 will give us 75,000 tax liability we are not going to take this one home government is taking it from source then the next will be 19 percent just as you guess right still another 500,000 that we at hand and if we calculate it right we are going to see that the 19 percent is going to give us 95,000 tax liability so all these are being taken away from our salary <laughs> is somebody saying whether we like it or not of course yes so it's going to be taken away from our salary then if we still have just as we have this tax now example of 5.8 the person is still going to be taxed more using the rate of 21 percent now so it's no longer graduating at four percent so it's 21 now so that means it graduates using additional two of 1.6 now 1.6 million of that will be taxed and if we calculate it right we are going to have figure my shares 336 thousand additional tax liability being paid to the government last but not the least of the tax rates the final leg is 24 percent the final leg is 24 percent so every other thing is on 24 percent and uh, i'm telling you the truth when i get to these tax rates uh, i'm not too comfortable again in employment because as an accountant i see it, i see it as a quarter of my salary being taken away by somebody that i could not even identify on the road <laughs> so but it's important for us like the last video of the theoretical i told us that it is in your interest to know how your tax is being charged so the last will be the 24 percent of anything more so if we add this together first of all we are going to observe that all these 300 plus 300 plus 500 plus 500 plus 1.6 will give us 3.2 so after the 3.2 any other thing that we earn will be on 24 percent now so the competition that we are having before is 5.8 for 8,000 Oh, is, it, is that million okay 5.8 million now we are going to take 3.2 that is all these ones that we've added before from the remainder and you know what if we calculate it very well like the figure machines we do we are going to arrive at 2.648 as the remainder of 5.8 and this 2.6 will be charged using 2.4 24 rates as the tax rate and the figure of our tax liability on this will be nothing less than incredible 635,000 plus exact figure this is what we are going to have so in total in total now the taxpayer is going to be paying or parting with 1.195 of his or our salary so mr abc or mrs abc is going to give one point over 1.12 1 
government so this is on annual basis so if we are paying 1.1 plus as our annual tax so from that 8.4 1.1 is going to leave it's not even going to touch our hands that is the truth so what will now be the monthly calculating the monthly tax payable on uh, 8.4 the person is going to be paying 99,626,000 thousand and a few coin okay so this is going to be a monthly deducted from monthly salary so therefore anybody that is any 700,000 don't forget the monthly salary of this person is 700,000 and he or she will not take home 99,626.67 then class I'm giving this up to us as assignment what is Mr. ABC or Mrs. ABC taking home? So this is how to actually calculate tax payable on personal income tax that we call pay as you earn. So Mr. ABC is earning 700,000. 99,000 is going to be taken away from his uh, salary and the rest will be what he or she is taking on on monthly basis just as on yearly basis the income will be 8.4 and 1.1 plus will be given to government the rest he or she will be taken away so please calculate what the rest is going to be from GGN's Saturday channel inbox let us know the figure that you get don't forget to subscribe click the notification click all so that you are going to be notified immediately we put on another video that you could trust is going to be enlightening and towards the success of your professional career. Bengal Latin GLC has been speaking. Next, we are going to be looking at another important topic. So, don't forget to subscribe. We are value to life. We are value to your businesses. Hello, everybody. Bengal Latin G here welcoming you to g james associates channel loss relief is what we want to look at in taxation today the purpose the types the rules that are governing loss relief so why do we have loss relief granted that is the purpose question we want to answer the types of loss reliefs and how to go about their administration and the rules we must be guided with for us to enjoy loss relief those are the things we'll be looking at right about now previously and if it sound interesting to you you may look this up on the channel computation of payee tax has been dealt with under personal income tax we've made a comp computation and calculation of it so if it does interest you you may look at the topic on the platform having said that let us go into loss reliefs after we had generated and had our audited financial statements then the tax man will pick it up and 
compute and compile the allowable and the disallowable expenses and after using the allowable and disallowable expenses then we will come to a loss we can call loss for the purpose of taxation because the financial loss does not necessarily mean that the organization will run a into loss especially when it comes to taxation so we should not take anything about accounting loss or taxation loss for granted or to be the same they are not the same thing so by way of introducing ourselves to loss release we need to emphasize that that they are different so when a company makes a loss from its trade or business when its allowable operating expenses actually exceed exceeds the total revenue made so in arriving at the chargeable profit of a company or loss as the case may be brought forward from the preceding year of assessment are to be deducted so especially if there is a loss in the preceding year we need to relieve it out of the profits for the year of assessment currently being looked at before we can conclude so the carry forward loss relief is available to a corporate taxpayer and we need to emphasize that too that for non-corporate for individual taxpayer carry forward loss relief because for individual taxpayers there are restrictions for them they need to have make an application and they can only relieve it from that source of income unlike the corporate organization in which they can actually carry it forward and beginning from 2007 actually they can actually carry it forward indefinitely having said that and what are the purposes of loss relief granted to an organization or even to any taxpayer or for that matter first of all to know the characteristics of relevant loss relief procedure having said that there are rules there are regulations that we need to understand so it's good that we familiarize ourselves with the character of loss release and the procedures for loss release and that is one of the reason and the purpose of studying loss release then to know the treatment of losses during commencement of business and there's a caveat on this there's an exception to the rule when we are talking about knowing the treatment of losses during commencement of business don't forget now that new finance acts has taken effect and because of that new finance acts as jettisoning the commencement rule about from the date of the beginning of op uh, operation of business to the first december that has been removed everything now is from the beginning to december and that made easy computation and has helped in removing everything about double taxation and the overlapping of the basis period all these are many more we've actually studied under that previous tax lectures that we've delivered you can look them up so now by the time we go into computation we'll see that our losses now will be only utilized not partially like before because of that overlapping issue that we have concerning commencement rule that has been taken away thanks to new finance hacks last but not the least of among the purposes that we are going to discuss is to know how to treat losses when there is an overlapping of basis period and now there is no longer 
overlapping of the basis period thanks to finance act rules guiding loss relief rules are important to be understood and one of the critical rule in loss relief is that in no circumstance shall the amount to be relieved exceed the total amount of loss in court i want to believe we understand that because that actually we amount to gaining on our losses and even in insurance company you cannot gain on on losses you can only enjoy and be brought back to normalcy not that you will now gain or will now gain on the losses with in court is to be brought back to the normal position that we have so likewise there shall not be gain on the losses made and that is what this rule actually is trying to capture in no circumstance shall the amount to be relieved be more than the total amount of loss i use this there because now we can carry forward indefinitely from 2007 also another rule that we need to understand and be at our fingertips is that relief can only be granted against the profits from the trade or business in which the loss was incurred. For example, you have so many businesses, let's say a conglomerate. A conglomerate, we have so many other organizations. So you cannot use the loss of hay in ABC conglomerates and to relieve the, from the profits of B. A will bear its loss, B will bear its losses, C will bear its losses, and at the end of the day, they, they, they can now consolidate and aggregate as, as a conglomerates. But individually, they are going to be relieved against the profit from the trade or business in which the loss was incurred. Also, the amount of the loss to be allowed should be that which the relevant tax authority is satisfied with as having been incurred by the company in a trade or business. Let me come again slowly. The tax authority, especially Federal Inland Revenue Service, must be sure and ascertain and agree with the taxpayer now the business the entity that having gone through their books maybe a desk desk review they agree that the organization actually made loss not pretending to have made loss or cooked it up no so it is one of the conditions so it, it therefore means that if the tax officials will not agree with the accounts presented to have add loss or at the end of the day the accessible profit the chargeable profit is not showing loss or losses it is not going to be allowed the organization is not going to enjoy loss relief this is very important and that is why as tax practitioners as accountants re building relationship especially when it comes to tax officers are very important and carrying the tax authority relevant tax authority along in our business is very important another rule governing loss relief is that beginning from 2007 like i've said organizations can now carry forward indefinitely and be relieved against future profits their losses in court also the loss available for relief should be computed on the same basis as that of the accessible profit for a year of assessment so we don't come and change the rule 
arbitrarily abruptly so that we can enjoy loss relief no the way we've been computing we must continue to use it consistency as part of our concepts must be abided by or with it therefore means that we can just change our basis period for taxation purposes anyhow we must just abide by the rule and be consistent with it in fact there's no reason for changing it anymore because everything now is from january to december by virtue of new finance act so that is almost impossible now because the simplicity that new finance act has brought into the game has actually eradicated that now let us move on to the types of loss reliefs that we could enjoy the types of loss reliefs that we could enjoy we have the current year loss reliefs carry forward loss reliefs and terminal loss reliefs the terminal loss reliefs carry forward loss release current year loss release so let us pick them one after the other so when we are talking about current year loss release as it suggests this is one of the methods for relieving losses and it is applicable only to individuals not the corporate entity it's available to us so proprietorship individual business businessman businesswoman so in this case losses incurred from a particular source of income can only be relieved against and other incomes that the businessman has made so in order to enjoy current year loss relief there must be a written application and this is one of the exception and the differences between the individual loss relief which we can call current year loss relief and the carry forward loss relief which the body corporates will enjoy so on the current year loss release the individual can enjoy loss release from other sources of income in as much that is that all of them are associated with that individual businessman or businesswoman too he or she must meet application within the next 12 months after the end of that assessment year for loss relief so it is important to note that the current year loss relief is applicable to a loss in court only in the first year only in the first year of business operation and any unrelieved loss can only be set off against the profits from the source from which the loss was incurred for for carrying forward loss release there is no need to have a written application by the taxpayer to the relevant tax authority it is automatically granted proceed me year basis don't forget that the organizations are usually taxed on basis. that is the tax year let's say for example the tax year 2022 will be assessing the business profit or loss of 2021 and so on so it's on preceding year basis so the relief too we take cognizance of that the loss of a source of income is relievable against future income and from the same source of income don't forget unlike the current year unlike the current year loss relief that basically enjoyed by the individuals that can put their different sources together and make uh, an application for loss reliefs for carrying forward loss relief 
the loss of a source or from a source of income is relievable against the future income earned from the same source of income. And last but not the least that we are going to talk about on the carrying forward loss relief is that the loss of a source of income shall be available for relief against the future profit from the same source of income until it is fully relieved or it is fully utilized. I think that's why it's called carrying forward loss relief anyway. So let us move on to terminal loss relief. Terminal loss release. So if you are yet to subscribe or you are viewing us joining up for the first time, please don't forget to subscribe, share, tell others to tell others about this channel and click on notification. Sh share, share, share. So for terminal loss release, cessation must come to our mind. Cessation rule must come to our mind. Therefore, actual year basis is indispensable in this regard. So the computation of accessible income for the year of cessation, that is the year, the terminal year, will be on actual year basis. So there is no provision in the Act for granting the relief for losses by a company in the year of assessment in which its trade or business permanently ceases. So thus, there is no relief for any loss incurred in the last year of trade, nor for any unrelieved loss or losses initially accumulated up to the date of cessation because the organization is no longer in existence and the tax authority or the government knows that there is no profit again coming from the end of that organization so we bring everything to an halt so therefore those losses accumulated will no longer be relieved and the computation for terminal loss relief is going to be on actual year basis so since a loss has been incurred for the period in which the organization ceases assessment will be new of course for the assessment year consigned the assessment is going to be new however there are provisions for the relief of unutilized capital allowance. Don't forget, capital allowance is associated with the assets we newly procure and depreciation. I hope we will remember that disallowable, allowable. So capital allowance is granted in lieu or, or in, in replacement of depreciation. So, however, there are provisions for the relief of unutilized capital allowance at the end of a permanent cessation of a company or a trade. So, such a capital allowance can be carried back to be relieved against the accessible profit of the preceding year. And such release come back to the past five years to be released to be relieved rather and I want to believe that this clause is to as much as possible because the organization is seizing and there may be need to pay creditor and the like the government is trying to do its own bits of parts to ensure that liabilities as much as possible is, re is reduced and relieved and creditors are encouraged to have more in the dissolution of the organization so therefore 
this is being granted and unutilized capital allowance is being used and we can relieve it even to the extent of the previous five years unutilized capital allowance so in computing capital allowance now is is simpler than before because there is no commencement to rule especially for organization that are just starting that is difficult like before it's no no longer overlapping so all we need to do we want to compute for loss relief is simply to bring last year's losses and first of all relief it that is deduct it from the profit made don't forget it's some proceeding year basis so now is only utilized on like before that we need to take a fraction of it because of the rule those have been jettisoned so just take the whole amount of the loss and utilize it especially if the profit can absorb it but don't forget one of the things that we learn is that we cannot gain from our losses so the loss cannot loss relief cannot exceed the initial figure of our loss on that particular trade or business as the case may may be so we love that you subscribe and we had loved to hear from you Jijens Associate channel subscribe and comment is there any area of loss relief that you would like to know more is there anything that you want us to bring clarity to in what we've learned in any of our topics under taxation or CSME hey, 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 and any other courses that we've discussed on this platform shout us emails under the description you can email us you can share to every other platform and tell others to tell others so that we can join force together and do it together to make it sweeter like my former lecturer used to tell us then when we were students from Jijin Sassoche channel Bengal Latin G has been speaking we have value to life we are value to your business don't forget to join us for another interesting topic